Hi everybody, welcome back to Bissell Maple Farms YouTube channel. I uh, decided to stay at the farm last night and um, it's a beautiful morning. We had snow this week and as you can see the leaves are coming off the trees. Um, the guys are on their way to Vermont to pick up the rest of the equipment from the maple farm in Vermont. Um, we have a uh, dropping off some vacuum pumps in western New York and Buffalo area. Uh, what else do we have going on? Um, the sap tanks. So we've got some big sap tanks that we're picking up in Vermont. We bought four 4,500 gallon sap tanks to store maple syrup. Uh, could not find any large stainless steel tanks. And uh, farmers want their drums back before the maple season, so we needed storage. So we decided to, uh, to buy out uh, uh, Cabot Hill's uh, Maple Farm in Cabot, Vermont, and uh, really the only piece of equipment that we really needed were the sap tanks, and um, Matt Emmerich, um, thankful to him, he took the um, the really nice, he got a Turbo 2 uh, Lapierre um, Turbo Evaporator, one of the nicest evaporators they make, efficiency-wise, just a nice machine, so those guys are getting ready to pick those up. Um, probably first thing in the morning and uh i'm here i'm gonna um probably irritate my dad for a little bit and um get to posting some new videos so for a while i've thought about changing our youtube channel name because what's a sugar chalet nobody really knows the story so i kind of want to educate people on how we arrived at that name um behind me is the sugar chalet um, we originally started with a sugar shack, which basically is something to keep the, uh, the rain off your neck while you're boiling sab. Then we improved to a sugar house, which basically means it has windows and a door. And then, uh, my aunt Linda coined the term. She said, uh, this isn't a sugar house. This is a sugar chalet. So here it is. This is the building that dad and I built the business out of. Um, kind of give you a tour of what it looks like. So behind me was the original woodshed. This uh, building right here was a pavilion and we would uh, store our firewood in there and to keep it dry. So that's where we would get our firewood ready uh, prior to maple season. And um, we took over and put in a pavilion, an enclosed pavilion. So when we had our pancake breakfast, uh, there was a place to have heat, warmth, and tables, and live music, and the pavilion became um, useful for entertaining. So, the Sugar Chalet became our brand. What I realized was, at the time, that most of the maple syrup brands were fictional. They were made-up names, or names of family farms that had been bought out, and Pretty much most of the maple syrup brands that you buy on a, on a shelf at a grocery store aren't real places. They are marketing. And um, so I thought about it and I said, well, if it's working for these guys, I want to create a brand. So we came up with Rock Creek Sugar Works. Sounds nice, but it's fictional. The Sugar Chalet is a real place. And this was our high-end brand of products. Um... I just thought at the time, no one wanted to buy maple syrup from a vacuum cleaner company. So that's why we started branding. And what I noticed was, is people walked into the store, they would walk in the front door, they would look at the Rock Creek Sugar Works brand, they would look at the Bissell Maple Farm brand, and they would buy the Bissell Maple Farm brand. They wanted to buy us our knowledge, our expertise, who we were, what we stood for. And um, that's when I realized that having a fictional brand of a fictional place, like it works for some people, but the customers told us what they wanted to buy. So behind me is dad's garden. Dad's pretty serious about his garden. But as you can see, the sugar house needed to grow. And I'm standing pretty much where 
at least the second or third row of corn used to be. When uh, we expanded the sugar house, I took some of Dad's garden, and uh, he wasn't happy that day. So right here is where we would have wood ready split, and we would just fill this wheelbarrow, wheel it right into where our little evaporator used to sit. Sliding door there. So this was where our evaporator was. Stacks would uh, go right through the roof here. But Dad and I poured all this concrete by hand with a wheelbarrow. And this is where our 2x6 arch was sitting. And then uh, as we expanded, so this was the original sugar house. You can see this is where we used to split wood inside. And uh, our uh, cement didn't quite hold up to the splitting of firewood right there. This was, uh, this is where we built this business. Put a couple drains in for cleaning the evaporator. And then our sap tanks were uh, right upstairs here. So let's head up. It's been a while since I've been here. Just become storage, I think. Still have this tank up here. This is an old cheese tank. This would actually be perfect for dumping bourbon barrels. I think that's what we need to do. Take this thing out and use it for dumping bourbon barrels. This is where our raw sap would pump up from the ravine. And then I had additional storage, so I built an overflow. So when this would fill, it would go downstairs. Pretty cool. And then if I needed to fill this up, because this would feed my RO. This tank, this head tank would feed my RO. Sap to the RO. But this is how we brought that sap, this tank up through here. It's Dad's garden. End of the growing season. So inside these walls was the first structure that my dad put up. And uh, yeah, it's kind of nice to come back and see this. I haven't really walked through in a long time. We haven't been here in over five years. We used to run all of our bottling out of this operation here. So this is where the kitchen was. Big Gravely fan. We'll definitely do some episodes on Gravely tractors. So this was where we would bottle inside this room right here. Had a crane in here. Turn a light on for you. So this has really become my dad's shop. So my dad does woodworking out here. Projects. There used to be a garage door right where I'm standing so you could drive through and unload your sap and pump it upstairs when we used to do buckets. This old barn wood was the siding and uh, this barn wood came from my Aunt Linda's barn in Pierpont, Ohio. It's a bedroom back here. Keep her snowshoes on the wall. There's a bedroom in the back. A little bit of a vaulted ceiling here. We used to have a TV on the wall. We had dish network. That's why it was a sugar chalet. Yep, there's Dad's garden. So I'm standing about where his peas used to be. Probably his tomato plants too. Yeah, he was not happy when we added the old bedroom on. This is our utility room. So 
So we would, uh, yeah, this has been an addition upon addition upon addition upon addition. So this is where our water utility is. Um, our sap still flows through this um, utility room. And it loops up. Comes back down and over. Goes back down underground to the garage at the property uh, next door. And that's where we pick up sap with our tanker. So this sugar house has hydronic heat. There's a boiler pump. And we actually heat the floor with this tankless water heater we have for, geez, gone probably over 10 years. 12, 15, I don't know, but this heats the floor. So we pump the water through the floor and then through this hot water heater. And this tankless hot water heater actually heats this building if we don't have a fire going. But this is uh, where we used to have our reverse osmosis. And we would pump it all up to the tank up above. It is nice in here. This is where we still, when we go tap trees, we keep all our tool tap, you know, tapping tools here. So when we go tap trees, this is our base of operation. Start a fire in the morning, and then we head out and go start tapping trees. Good morning. Just wanted to finish up my video about the Sugar Chalet. I'm out here at the farm this morning. I've been thinking about finishing that up with, uh, I got evicted. I say that jokingly and lovingly, but what happened was is the maple syrup company, it robbed my parents of their liberty. What happened was my mom went out to get the dog and she was in her robe. And a tour bus was there staring at her. And my mom went right back in the house. David! Gave my dad, that's Daddy Dave. Gave my dad a what for. And my dad was real nice about it. He says, uh, son, uh, yeah, you're, you're going to have to move. We'll, we'll give you a couple years. And by then, we were already pressed for space and just capacity. And we did additions on the sugar house and then another addition on the sugar house. And then bought the building next door. And we kept doing additions. And we, we had to move. We outgrew. I'm very thankful for this facility and what it stands for and what we've accomplished here. And I still love it. I miss the farm, too. But we had to grow. You have to give up to go up. And um, that's what I've learned both as a leader and an individual, as a business owner. But even tools, equipment, things you love might not be big enough for you. And uh, you can squish your own, your own chances and opportunities with holding on to things. And uh, I love this place. And I'm thankful for what it's done for Bissell Maple Farm. And uh, I'm looking forward to the future, too. So if you like this content and you like getting to know us and and me and our business and the, the characters that help make Bissell Maple Farm go, hit that like and subscribe button and hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button and that'll tell you when we're going to post some new maple syrup stories or adventures. Thanks and have a good one.